Well, hello and welcome to Not The Jenny Show on Orange Hat Radio. This is Jenny Stevens, a.k.a. the Ukulele Girl, and this show is all about the wonderful musicians I've had the privilege of meeting over just about the last year while the world has been on pause. While we've all been staying safe at home, musical creativity has exploded, and there is a hot bit of activity going on in houses up and down the land, nationally and internationally. It's my pleasure to introduce you to some of these artists and bands I've been getting to know lately and they'll be telling us how 2020 changed the trajectory of their musical careers and what's next for them in 2021. If you'd like to get in touch with the show you can tweet me at the underscore ukulele girl and don't forget to use the hashtag notthejennyshow or ntjs for short. This is a pre-record, so I won't be reading your tweets out live on the air this evening, but I will be responding on Twitter tonight because, let's face it, I'm probably on there right now, aren't I? So tweet me at the underscore ukulele girl and don't forget to use that hashtag, not the Jenny show or NTJS for short. So, on tonight's show, this guest is the head honcho of a fantastically talented six-piece band who are creating tasty interplanetary funk and awesome music videos. They are seriously impressive live and put out the smoothest records. Yes, tonight, Not The Jenny Show is excited to present Fubs and Chubs. <laughs>
So joining me now all the way from Ohio, USA, please welcome Dr. Fubs of Fubs and Chubs. Welcome to the show, Fubsy. Well, thank you so much for having me, my darling. <laughs> and what a pleasure it is to be here. I am so happy to get to talk to you finally. I know. All of this messaging and emojis. Now we can finally hear each other's voice and what a pleasure it is. Well, today we're going to talk all things fubs and chubs. So I want to take you right back to the very beginning. How did it all start? I was going under the moniker Dr. Fubs, and I was at the time sort of on a musical hiatus. I was doing a lot of home recording, and I met Tony Schaefer, who is Chubbs, mm -hmm. and he was in a band called the Womack Family Band, which I definitely suggest looking up their music. It's fantastic Americana. And we started getting together on Wednesdays, and we would have scotch and cigarettes and whatever happened, happened. But there was always instruments and microphones, and we recorded well, subsequently, it became 10 songs for us to hear and for our friends to hear. Now, this was seven years ago, and he was still in the Womax. I was still playing little shows here and there, and I had backup bands that would come out with me. And the Womax ended up tragically breaking up through a series of unfortunate events, and we sort of talked to one another and we're like, you know, why don't why don't we just release this album? And we released Bad Dreams and it was accepted. The songs were fun and good. And the next thing you know, after some people had heard this album, a lot of really fantastic musicians started coming our way. Tony was also playing in a band called The Big Black Galactic, which is uh, I guess math jazz would be the best way to put it. Really solid music. I also suggest going and checking that out. Yeah. And those fellas ended up becoming the other counterparts of the rhythm section of Fubs and Chubs. Not only the rhythm section, but very helpful in the songwriting and just best friends of ours. And flash forward to... Well, I guess it would be 2017. We began work on our second studio album, which was Dance Pop Volume 1. Mm -hmm. And it was six songs fully produced. The first album wasn't fully produced. We, we, were, we were doing it in the middle of an Ohio cornfield in this really tiny building. <laughs> but... <laughs> It sounded really good. The second one, we we went at it really hard and had a lot of fun doing it. And uh, we played hundreds of shows and met a lot of great people. And then we said, well, maybe we should try making some videos. Maybe we should try going all out with it. You know, and it was never for anyone else but us because we like to make ourselves laugh we like to have fun and it's it's seeming to work and flash forward to well i guess it would be 2019 we began work on our third studio album which is club soda which is absolutely ridiculous i still listen to it <laughs> quite a bit and i'm almost beside myself sometimes at how tongue-in-cheek not only the lyrics are but just the orchestration but it i can't get over it. it's really good still <laughs> oh my gosh you you preach into the choir let me tell you when i first found you guys back in december it was when i first joined twitter and i shouted out for any indie artists to send me their spotify links and of course you did mm -hmm. So I started going through everybody alphabetically, listening to a couple of songs and then moving on. And it was all going swimmingly until I got to F in the alphabet. And of course, then I played Fubs and Chubs and I literally went no further. 
because I was so hooked on your guys' music. Literally two hours later, I was like, I'm still listening to these guys on repeat. (laughs) Honestly. I mean, what you're putting out is so different to anything else that I've heard. Like, Where does that sound come from with you guys? We're all so heavily influenced, I think, at the end of the day by pop music. Mm. And... We're all also heavily influenced by the sound of the 70s, the, the Moog synthesizer, the, the guitar tones they use, the, the Wurlitzer pianos. Um, and we're lucky enough to have these, these items in our tool belt and to be able to use them instead of, you know, stealing samples, which, I mean, we steal samples also. But <laughs> as far as uh, just that, that old-fashioned, I've heard this before sound, we're also tuned into that and we always kind of i think subconsciously go into it as we need to make this song as a song that someone already knows Mm. so you kind of already know what's coming up next and it's familiar to you and i think that that kind of it draws the listener in and it 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 keeps it fresh for us, even though we know what's coming up. I think that's why I love your sound so much, because it's got that retroness to it. Like you said, you know, you feel like you've heard these songs before. They feel like old friends, but they're so fresh as well. And the humour in them is what I love as well. Like the song Mac and Cheese, that just cracks <laughs> me up. It's this like really <laughs> sexy funk song but it's talking about mac and cheese i just love it (laughs) when you know we have these these ideas like okay let's write a song about becoming rich but even though we're so rich we just can't get enough of that craft macaroni and cheese (laughs) like who, (laughs) who in their right mind not only thinks these things but then creates this this magnificent building out of this idea I just I just love the ridiculousness of it. I actually I want to talk about the band members because um we've we've mentioned a couple of names but the six of you guys, right? Yes. Okay. So we've got yourself, Dr. Fubs. Mhm. We've got Chubbs. Mhm. Bubs. Bubs. Yeah, Bubs is the drummer. Rubs. Rubs is our guitar extraordinaire. Tubs. Tubs is the bass extraordinaire and multi-instrumentalist. And then Chun. <laughs> Chun. <laughs> so, Good old Chun. So Fubs, Chubs, Bubs, Rubs, Tubs, and Chun. <laughs> Good old Chun. Oh, boy, he's just the sweetest boy that you, you just want to <laughs> grab him up. And he's just, he's the youngest of us all. And he's just, he's so in tune with what's happening in the hip crowd. And you just want to really... You just want to wring his neck sometimes with his youth <laughs> and his wittiness. Oh, bless Chun's heart, that sweet boy. He is also a multi-instrumentalist, and the kid is just a powerhouse. He's he's such an amazing young man, and he's the only other Sagittarius besides myself in the band, so we have a special union. Oh, that's sweet. Um, what first got you into creating music yourself? Number one, I think it was just in me. Um, I grew up in, you know, I was part of the Reagan administration. I was born in 1978, and there was a lot of great music around, and I really just wanted to play guitar. Mm. And I remember having a shoebox with a lot of rubber bands on it and making sounds. And from then on, I was I was hooked. And, you know, I was lucky enough to grow up in a time where there was so much happening, you know, rap was just coming on the scene and I was really turned on by that. Mm -hmm. But I was also turned on by heavy metal. You know, I loved Ozzy Osbourne. I loved these guitar parts. And I was also turned on by bands like The Doors. And I was probably the only 13 year old kid who listened to Curtis Mayfield in the suburbs of Columbus, Ohio. You know, I was listening to lots of old soul music and I just couldn't, I couldn't get enough of it. You know, other kids wanted to go out and chase girls and, you know, I was stuck in my room (laughs) wondering, (laughs) why why can't I get a girlfriend? I must be too (laughs) tall on, you know, I just couldn't get enough of, of playing music and I still can't. Where did you pick up that soul music from at that time? 
I had a lot of records, and I'm not even really sure where a lot of these records came from. And I would put them on, and it was undeniable. Listening to a to a Parliament Funkadelic record mm. after you've just listened to a Iron Maiden's Number of the Beast, I know it sounds <laughs> like that it contrasts one another, but I always fall back to the good music is good music. And I still fall back on that. You know, Yeah. I like Gloria Stefan. <laughs> it's good music. Hell yeah. I like some Justin Bieber songs. They're good songs. Yeah. You know, if it's good, it's good. Definitely. So at what point did you pick up a guitar for the first time? I would have been eight. Wow. Gosh, are you really young? Yeah. And how did that come about? Then it was, you know, smoke on the water and doing little tricks. Mm. I don't think I played my first chord until I was 10. It was just a lot of noodling. Mm. And then I figured out, wow, you can, there's chords. (laughs) (laughs) And, you know, I don't know if you remember uh, tablature books and going and picking up these books that showed you these little tiny squares with the chords in them. Yeah. And after that, I was like, yeah, I do have a paper route and I'm going to spend my money on these books so I can learn Led Zeppelin songs and all of the other songs. We just opened the show with Hot Legs, which is off the 2018 record that you mentioned before, Dance Pop. Mm-hmm. Tell us, uh, Hot Legs is actually one of my favorite songs, so I was so pleased when you chose it for the show. Tell us a little bit about that song. Hot Legs is the the anthem of knowing that you have your... Can I curse on here? Yeah, go on. Hot Legs is the anthem of knowing that you have your shit together. <laughs> it's It's when you look in the mirror right before you go out and you're like, man, you know, yesterday I may have looked like a pile of biscuits, but today... <laughs> I look fantastic and and I smell good and and you know every once in a while you you turn around to walk out of the bathroom but you give yourself a glance back and you're like I even look good from the back. <laughs> it's it's the song for everyone to go out and say, "You know what? Today's the day. I've got the my legs look good. <laughs> I look good from the back and I'm going to go out and I'm going to take this night." So how does songwriting go down between y'all typically? Um, Most of the, uh, and I I would say 95% of the co-writes are between Chubbs and I. uh, We're kind of mad scientists when it comes down to it. Um, If you shut us in a room, one of us will have pad and paper and the other one's working on a melody line. And it's never a, a specific thing. But then we also switch roles when this is happening so um and and it will even go down to the point of he'll be driving around in a car and he'll say i have this idea this is what's happening and the song will be written before we even get to the studio Wow. now as far as the sprinklings and a lot of the melody lines and stuff i i have to give it up to rubs um Ryan DeBarbery is a genius, and he comes up with a lot of really tasty melody lines that kind of, you know, if we have a a good thing going, he just comes in and polishes it and makes it such a beautiful, beautiful thing. Well, on that note, we're actually going to take a little break and hear another song. So right now we're actually going to play Booty Shake, which is from your 2020 album Club Soda. Fantastic. So, um... Here we go. This is Booty Shake. I love to watch a booty shake. Every size, color, model, shape, and make. My love, you got to trust Cause you know I'm looking but I never touch Oh, when when we walking down the street And every other lady looking like a tree They don't do what you do I'm coming home with you 
Since the beginning of time All across the land Booty like a fruit Wanna hold in my hand Apple peach bread Fresh from a vinyl tree I don't But it's not like you I'm sitting here working with what I got And I can't keep my eyes off of you And you, and you, and you Some rump round, some flat as a board I seen 2020 booty at the grocery store I had to maintain myself in the checkout lane Madam, that thing inside your jeans has got me going insane Ever since I was a child, booty staying on my mind Pick it fresh, right straight from the vine. Apple peach bread, fresh from a vinyl tree. I don't care. I love to watch a booty shake, every size, color, model, shape, and make. My love, you got to trust. Cause you know I'm looking, but I never touch. Oh, and when we walking down the street, and every other lady looking like a tree. They don't do what you do I'm coming on with you Since the beginning of time All across the land Booty like a fruit Wanna hold in my hand Apple peach bread Fresh from a vinyl tree I don't care you guys were regular performing artists what kind of gigs were you playing before things shut down last year we ended on probably the best note that a live performing act could end on we uh we played a festival series called the bright winter fest in cleveland ohio outdoors in january and i know that sounds crazy but the stages were heated everything was great and there was anywhere between 1,500, 2,000 people. It was it was a massive, massive show. So we kind of ended on on a really good note. And you know, before everything started happening, really all of the shows we played were we couldn't have asked for for better audiences. Um, and we were always always busy. When you're talking throughout the summer, every weekend we were playing, mm. and even into the fall, every weekend, mm. and in winter, we did a lot of like uh, a lot of showcase stuff. We would play lots of shows in um, Cleveland and Columbus. You know, we we all live in in rural Ohio, so we're definitely not uh, city boys. But we were busy, busy, busy boys. What's been your most favorite gig today with Fubs and Chubs? I would say that uh, the Bright Winter Fest is up there yeah but we played a show that was much smaller than that at a place called mahal's in cleveland and we got there and i'm like oh this this is awesome this is a great place that you know the history here is fantastic and they're like oh you guys are playing in the basement (laughs) meanwhile here we are this six piece act with all of this equipment Mm. and i go down in the basement and it's like one of those places that you went when you were 16 and you snuck in it just it stunk it (laughs) was it you know it smelled like cigarette butts and and armpits 
and there was the one weird guy in the corner like, hey, I can't wait to see this. <laughs> that show ended up being one of the funnest and most packed. Everyone was having such a great time. Uh, we ended up closing the night out and we played with a psychedelic rock band called Zip Zap, who is great. And uh, I know that that the Bright Winter Fest, the, the crowd was massive. It was one of the biggest things we've ever seen. But there was something about the family feel and the love in the room at, at Mahal's that was just, you, you can't reproduce that kind of thing. Yeah. It, it really blew me away, especially walking into it thinking, <laughs> this is going to be a stinker. <laughs> Don't judge a floor by its cigarette butts, I guess. Yeah. Have you ever had like a terrible gig, you guys? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. We've had, uh, like I said, we we have hundreds of shows under our belts. And there have been <laughs> those. And I know that you know this as well. You get so excited. You're well rehearsed. You look good from the back and you're ready for this packed night of all of these people. And there's 12 people there, <laughs> six of which are at the bar and they're watching sports television. And for me, I'm going to yell at these people <laughs> and I'm going to make them listen. Yeah, we've had some we've had some stinkers. You know, the guy coming up. Well, don't you guys know any Billy Joel? <laughs> yeah, I feel you. I think we've all been there, haven't we? So what was the realization like around about a year ago when it became obvious that the world was pretty soon going to be closed for business as far as shows were were, were concerned? That must have been a real blow for you guys. It it definitely was. It and it wasn't about anything more than the fact that we were very much in a schedule and routine. We rehearse and get together every single Thursday. Mm. And, you know, a lot of our significant others were not comfortable with that. And a lot of us simply weren't comfortable with that. We didn't know what this virus really meant mm. and um it really hurt a lot you know to know that we couldn't not only we couldn't go play shows but we couldn't even the six of us haven't been in the same room in over a year wow. and uh you know we we would get on zoom calls and talk to each other and you know do the things that that every other person on the planet was doing to try to maintain some sense of normalcy in their life and it was hard it was hard i think that you know there was a certain level of depression that was to be expected that uh you know may have taken a little bit longer for some of us to feel but we definitely felt it and uh yeah you, you, you kind of just you feel like you're you're losing something really important to you even though it's not lost it's sort of in limbo it was a very better thing to happen as it was to every other performing artist on the planet you know but if it's happening to you you're going to take it personally you yeah. know what do you think you guys would be doing creatively musically right now had it not been for 2020 shaping things so uniquely um we would have absolutely been getting ready to release the quintessential fubs and chubs which is still in the talks and is still going to happen and that's going to be 10 songs from chubs mm -hmm. 10 songs from fubs and we would have been in the studio weekly working on that and playing shows um we had a fantastic idea for the song booty shake um we were going to rent a roller rink and we had everything set up. I mean, we storyboarded this idea before before COVID hit. And meanwhile, it sits on a shelf. So you think at, at some point you'll revisit that when the world is open again? Yes, absolutely. 
one of my one of my favorite videos on your youtube is actually the one for um pool party tell me a bit about that day or days when you filmed that it's just such a good video we again we we had an idea we we wanted it to come to life and and we brought it to life and we shot all of the pool scenes and the party scenes in one day and then we shot all of the yacht scenes in another day Mm -hmm. and um we were lucky enough to have a lot of our fans come out and take part in the video shoot. Um, it was just, it was such a fun day. And um, Monocle Design in Cleveland, Ohio, came out for the production of that video, and he did a he did a fantastic job. It looked like so much fun. Like you could just see it in the in people's faces. Like in the video, it just looked like it was a hilarious day. Oh, we. We had a blast and I was uh I was wearing what I like to refer to as my thunderwear. <laughs> it was a uh, very tight scantily clad underwear with fruit salad all over them. I I I I can't, I can't say I noticed those. I, um I I mean I definitely <laughs> wasn't looking that close. I I mean <laughs> The water was very cold also. So I, and of course I once my pants were off, I did not put them back on. So when the extras start, started to show up and they see this very pale, tall, dad bod having person <laughs> it was really hard to get a full hug from anyone. <laughs> we did have an awesome time though. We had a uh, one of our great pals josh villa came out and cooked for everyone and you know we just wanted everybody to have a good time so you know we kept that in our budget of okay if we're going to have 50 people here we need to feed 50 people and we need to have drinks for 50 people so we just it was such an awesome awesome day and at the very end of the day for the night shots (laughs) thunder and lightning started to happen and no good old chun (laughs) Almost knocked one of the rigging lights into the water, bringing us all <gasps> to a quick demise. <laughs> no. It was pretty ridiculous. It was pretty ridiculous. Oh. But such a fun day. I got more sunburnt that day than I think <laughs> I ever have been in my life. If you look at the Congo line scene and you pay close attention, if you look at me, I am a lobster. Really? I didn't pick up on that. (laughs) Uh, I'm giving away a lot of little tidbits here. So the next time you watch, you'll be like, oh, my God, he's a lobster. (laughs) I'm definitely going back and watching that again with that knowledge. Oh, boy. I tell you what, there's one little tidbit that I do want to know. Was Chubbs naked behind his keytar at the end? His twig and berries (laughs) was completely out. Yes. (laughs) Yes, it was. Awesome. <laughs> I love it. I mean, your your YouTube is the most bonkers YouTube that I think I've found so far. Oh, we've got some stuff. <laughs> oh my gosh, you've got some stuff. I've I've never I've never clicked into so many videos and a warning has come up saying this video may be inappropriate for some <laughs> like <laughs> literally every other one of your videos this warning comes up you boys are crackers like oh, you got to keep it safe for the kids oh <laughs> my god it's so, right in fact do you want to do you want to shout out your youtube um and all your social handles so that people can come and have a look at this stuff Absolutely. If you just Google search or Bing search or Firefox or whatever your browser is, Fubs and Chubbs YouTube, Fubs and Chubbs Instagram, Fubs and Chubbs Twitter, Fubs and Chubbs Reddit, Fubs and Chubbs 4chan, Fubs and Chubbs Pornhub, we're (laughs) everywhere. (laughs) Maybe not the last one. Don't go to the last one, please. (laughs) I wouldn't be surprised. But yeah, I would urge anybody listening, please go to their YouTube and have a look at their bonkers videos because, I mean, if you're bored in lockdown, you could literally you lose hours on Fubs and Chubbs YouTube channel. Do you know? Do you know what's funny though? I was I was watching some the other day, 
And it right in my head, you all live together like some kind of dysfunctional family <laughs> because of, because of the club soda video. Like I'm now convinced that you all live together. Oh. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> I can um, totally see that though. It's hilarious. Speaking of the way I found you on Twitter, how did you discover the indie music community on there? Um actually engaging with people, you know. Um I I have a a special, well it's not even a special gift. It's just you know, if I go to the gas station and I make eye contact with someone, I'm going to talk to them and I'm not going to just mill around. I'm going to be human with them. So, you know, I joined Twitter, you know, for the for the fubs and chubs boys uh, about two years ago and people would send you stuff and I actually listen you know Mm. I listen and give feedback good or bad because you know as well as I do you're hit with a lot of stuff on Twitter and sometimes it might not be your cup of tea (laughs) and I think that's the nicest way to say it (laughs) but there are also the times that you meet just incredible people and to to use Twitter as a tool and to remain human in that tool, I think that that is how I got affiliated with a lot of the, the indie community mm-hmm. through Twitter was just being a human being and actually talking to people instead of just like, hey, check out this link. Hey, check out this link. Now, don't get me wrong. Fubs and Chubs is the reigning king of spam. <laughs> We will spam every inbox, but we will also talk to you like people because at the end of the day, I'm pretty sure that it was someone with thumbs that set up this interview. The reason I first actually fell in love with you was because when I met you on Twitter back in December, me and you and Matt from Storm of Crows Mm -hmm. got into a re ridiculous thread (laughs) and i can't even remember now how we got into it oh i i know exactly what you're talking about and i think it went you know it was midweek for me probably early in the morning and it went from something pretty like mundane and jolly to you know from good morning you know just having (laughs) some coffee and two hours later (laughs) were completely bamboozled <laughs> <laughs> and i can't remember what the premise of the conversation was or anything no. i i remember there was something about you peeking through people's windows because you're a creep <laughs> <laughs> matt like matt has set up this premise that i'm some kind of sex pest stalker who hides in people's gardens <laughs> right so, sim- so simultaneously, the narrative was that I was not only hiding in his garden, but was hiding in the cornfield outside your house. Right. I remember this this quote, you're not safe across the pond. <laughs> <laughs> and so began our love affair, Miss Stevens. Oh, exactly. Well, on that ridiculous note, let's break and we'll play another track. So right now we're going to play off your 2020 album Club Soda. This is Boogie Boy. Can't take no more. Boy, got the boogie till you 
no more. Boy, I got to fight till it boogie no more. I want to see you boogie, but the boogie like your boogie boy. Boy, I got to boogie till it boogie no more. Boy, I got to boogie till it boogie no more. I guess we feel like we know you pretty well by now, but I'd like you to tell us something about you that we don't know. Could be music or anything. Oh, well, I have quite a bit of skeletons in my closet. Um, one thing you may not know is I was a professional executive chef for 20 years of my life. You're kidding. I'm not kidding. I was a fine dining chef for a lot of years of my life. Um so that was a lot of fun. Um, another thing that you may not know is I have a lot of serious music that might make you cry. <laughs> really? What what kind? Oh, you can refer to the Fubs and Chubs YouTube and look at any of the solo Dr. Fubs songs. Oh, wow. Gosh, I haven't looked at those yet. Oh, yeah. You will cry. My My philosophy is this flirt with everything i know you've seen it before but actually think about it flirt with people and it flirting has nothing to do with being sexual flirt with people flirt with ideas flirt with concepts i like to cover every base in everything that i do i like to cover every emotion in music now Fubs and Chubs, we have the funk and the fun on lockdown. But there's a piece of me that is quite serious and quite dark. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I know that it sounds like, hold on, this is taking a serious turn. Well, I like to have all of my bases covered. 
So there you go. I would say that that duality is not uncommon in musicians. Would you agree with that? Oh, I would totally agree with that. Yeah. I mean, it's like life. Nothing can be sunshine and roses all the time. There's darkness in everything. So why not music? Absolutely. Well, you can't have light without the dark. Mm-hmm. 100%. So 2021 is unfolding. Mm-hmm. We don't quite know how it's going to turn out. What's the ideal scenario for you guys in 2021? Well, luckily, Chubbs is a insane madman <laughs> in the best of ways. <laughs> he has unfolded what is known as Odd Fellow Productions. So we now have the ability to create video in house. Rubs is a fantastic editor we can completely create all of the videos in-house so we have a lot of songs that we are kicking around and we are going to pick things apart one at a time we are going to make the song and then make the video for the song and they will all be very very professional and they'll all look very good me personally i have a massive index of I'm I'm a movie freak. I love film. So we're going to do a lot of throwback stuff and I think we're you know in the uncertainty of the times our main objective is to flood uh our YouTube with as much quality video as we can. And we're going to try to do a couple live performances and stuff, but a lot of the storyboarded video I think is our main thing that is until boris says that we're allowed to go out and hug one another again wouldn't that be an amazing day oh god i can't wait i'm coming to see you yes (laughs) i will be waiting for you at the airport (laughs) (laughs) so you mentioned that um about making videos and actually you just released one recently for Mm -hmm. the song which we're going to be closing the show out uh with today my cologne Tell us about that video. Um, My Cologne was one of the songs that kind of happened in a car. Um, Chubbs had called me with an idea. And it not only is funny, but it's true. We, both him and I, are very bougie when it comes to smelling good. We like to smell good. (laughs) So why not write a song about it? Um, He called me with the idea, and by the time I had showed up to the studio, it was just the two of us, and we knocked it out very quickly. And the version that was knocked out is the version that you see on the video. There's been nothing else done to that version. Um, That was our first shot at a full video production by ourselves. We did all of that by ourselves, the editing, the, the lighting, the whole kit and caboodle. Um, we went in, we all took the day off. Well, the four of us, and we shot for eight hours and we listened to Mike alone 35 times (laughs) (laughs) and we went and bought a trash can to, to stuff Chun into. Yeah. Now this, this (laughs) is one of the things that I wanted to ask you. Why was Chun in a bin? Poor little Chun. Well, you know, we were we were grooving and we were looking real good and we were doing some really good dance moves and you know the the idea behind it was we've come across this bin and who's in there? Oh, it's Chun and he's covered in trash. Oh, poor boy. But if we spray him with our cologne, he will be magically transformed formed into this magnificent saxophone monster. <laughs> I love that bit when he stands up out of the bin like it's just <laughs> so funny. Didn't he just look so magnificent oh, after he was sprayed with my cologne? I mean, that that's the other thing I wanted to ask you. Were you actually spraying cologne? Because the amount you were spraying, you would have been <laughs> sick. Was it water or was um, it cologne? Well, well, uh, Tony had the the gumption to fill his bottle with water, whereas I didn't really 
have the the foresight to think, <laughs> hey, you're going to be spraying this in his face. <laughs> so it was half water, half cologne. <laughs> were, were you not like really sick afterwards because you'd been smelling this cologne for like eight hours? We uh, we smelled pretty strong <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh so so guys we're going to be closing out the show with um with that track my cologne in a little bit and i i love that song actually it's pretty cool thank you so it's it's kind of your next single but at the moment it's only available on youtube right yes it's available on youtube and it's it's free on youtube we will I think the way that it looks right now, rather than uh, hitting the studio and knocking out a a full length album, we're just going to release singles and we will get those singles up to their respective spots um, when we, (laughs) I guess, when we get around to it. But until then, it'll all be free and available on YouTube. Fantastic. You heard it here first, folks. I want to ask you, I know this is difficult for a musician to answer, but if I was to put you on the spot, do you have a favorite Fubs and Chubbs song? I would I would probably have to say uh, Boogie Child uh, off of Dance Pop Volume 1. It has everything that you would want in, in a Fubs and Chubbs song. It's, it's the quintessential Fubs and Chubbs sound. It has just enough live funk in it. It has just enough electronic funk in it. It has the vocoder. It has the big harmonies. It, it has, if you wanted an introduction to Fubs and Chubs, I think that Boogie Child would be the best and safest place to start. That's actually my favorite Fubs and Chubs song. Like that. The intro, I just have to hear it sometimes. Like, I crave to hear it. That bum, 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 bum. Ah. Oh. And, like, the groove is just so good. There's just enough room in it. Mm. You know, and it, it, and I still remember putting it together. And I was noodling around with that guitar part. And the next thing you know, we had it in the can. And... The original ending was not the electric, the electric synth ending. It was sort of a, a funky fade out. And uh, we went back in, and I had the idea to put electronic drums in the end. And Bubs is, oh, the end shouldn't be like that. We got that funky end. And of course, after it was said and done, he had to listen to it about fifty times before he was like. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, anybody who would like to go and listen to your music, they can find you on Spotify, all those usual places, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Spotify, Tidal, Deezer, um, Yandex. I think Yandex is big in, like, the Czech Republic. Um, oh, that's a new one on me. Oh, yeah. We, uh, when we release albums we release them through cd baby and their um their digital unit is pretty good they they really push you through a lot of the digital marketing units Mm. so final question Mm -hmm. do you still have any really big ambitions that you would still like to fulfill as as far as music goes Hmm. oh I mean, I'd really like to to get a country album out. We, really? We have we have uh, we've got about six country songs that <laughs> that are are in the works. You know, that would be amazing. We'll get there. That would be amazing. I think we only have we have two up on our YouTube channel right now, and uh, <clears throat> one of which is entitled "Poop and Pee." I was just about to bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> because I think you I think you dropped that on my Twitter profile one day and I <laughs> innocently went along to listen to it and I was like I felt like someone had spiked my drink. <laughs> yep, that's the old bait and switch. <laughs> I mean, well, the funny thing about the funny thing about poop and pee um 
don't take you there, seriously. <laughs> there, there's a, a wonderful young lady who, who sings on that. Her name's Emily Keener, and she is a just a beautiful, beautiful soul. And um, she actually sings on Booty Shake as well. She is the female voice on Booty Shake. Oh, she wow. was the number two runner-up on The Voice She's a fantastic musician, and we always end up putting her in these situations <laughs> where she, that she's more than willing to do because we're in there and having fun, and we're like, "Hey, you know, you wanna you wanna come and sing some harmonies on poop and pee?" <laughs> <laughs> it's undeniably a good song. God. Well, yeah, I mean, it is. It's a really good song. <laughs> Oh my god, you're just oh. you're so crackers and I just love you for it. Little boys grow up to be men, but there's that little piece of us that always stays small. <laughs> and luckily we can exploit that. That is why I love you. So on that note, I think we'll we'll leave it there and I will let you go. Fantastic. Thank you so much for coming in and chatting with me today. It's been fabulous chatting to you and getting to know you a little bit better. I'm sure everyone has enjoyed it as well. And thank you so much for having me, Jenny. It really means a lot. My absolute pleasure. So we are going to close out the show right now with the next single. This is My Cologne.
So there goes Dr. Furbs. What a gorgeous soul. I really enjoyed that chat. Why don't you head on over to Twitter and see him, say hello, give him a follow so you can keep up to date with what he's doing musically. You'll find him at Fubs and Chubs. And as we said, you can stream and download all their music on all the usual music platforms, including Spotify, iTunes and all those stores. And that's all we've got time for today. And in fact, that's all we've got time for this series. Thank you so much for joining me for Not The Jenny Show for the past six weeks. I've had such a blast interviewing all my lovely guests. That was The Godzilla Attacks Tokyo Kamikaze Blues Band, Reckless Velvet, Storm of Crows, Fendeline, The Blindfold Experience and Fubs and Chubs. Thank you guys for listening and supporting the show. Thank you to Orange Hat Radio for having me and hopefully I'll see you some point in the future. So from me, Jenny Stevens, aka the ukulele girl, this has been Not The Jenny Show and I'll see you guys on the socials.